GM. <laughs> okay, so my opponent is playing the opening that I prefer to play, and that is uh, E6. So I'm going to play Knight to F3, a flexible move. I could have gone for a French defence, and my opponent's done the Dutch. What a cheeky so and so. Can you Adam and Eve it? Okay, now. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a brave man. I'm going to play a gambit line because I'm in a mood for a bit of violence today. And the gambit line I'm going to play now is an old idea of international master uh, from England called Nigel Povar. And the gambit line is this move, which is a very rare gambit. An extremely, extremely rare gambit, this one. The idea of which is to get some attack on the light squares. Um, so this is a, it's a little crazy move here. Uh, I know loads of weird gambits. This, this is a, th I first faced this, I'm, I'm 38 now, probably when I was about 16. I don't think it's very good, but it's very dangerous. And um, we'll have a look at how this works a bit later on. Now, Percy Hepworth, you're obviously incorrect. Did you not see the lessons at the start? The Rook Swinger? Did you not see those Rook Swings? Um, Hello to Wasman. Okay, now the point of this is I go knight here and I'm aiming to win my pawn back, but I also want to play pawn to f3 at some moment, um, opening up lines as I'm going to do now, which I can hopefully attack on at a later moment. So I'm trying to, if he takes there, I'm not sure how the gambit goes. Do, do I take back with my queen, maybe? And I want to get my bishop here, and I want to castle quickly. So I'm going for a quick attack in, in, in this um, in this game. Quick attack. Thank you, Rem Maximus, for subscribing to my channel. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Rem. I'm looking to build up uh, subscribers. As, an, as you can see, if you are a Twitch Prime uh, guy which Rem is, obviously, you some, can subscribe to this channel. You, some, you know, just press the subscribe channel at the top for free. So you don't even have to play, pay any money. Uh, dig in the fish, Simon. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for that. Uh, they are pretty cool. I don't know, what other background should I go for? Uh, we like that a lot. Um, Oh, Blazero, that is a you, very kind Simon. donation. Thank you so much, Blazero. Thanks, man. That's very kind. Um, and I will try to keep streaming on a regular basis. Uh, I want to keep streaming as as much as I can when I have time. I've also got other like operations things I'm trying to do, which will help, which will help my streams. But thanks, man. That's very kind of you, Blazero. Very, very, very kind of you. Okay, so my opponent has not accepted the, the sacrifice, so I'm just gonna take that pawn, get my pawn back, kind of relieved with that. Uh, Var Lack, thank you for subscribing to the channel as well. Thank you for subscribing. Um, and anyone who's subscribed or donations, they mean a lot, thank you so much. Okay, now, um, what am I thinking here? Well, if you saw my explanation earlier on, the kind of thing that I want to do when I'm playing is literally get my knights and bishops in the game. But I have to watch out now, maybe for his knight coming here. I mean, whenever your opponent plays a move, always try to think what they're trying to do. Now, my opponent is lining up against my knight. Um, so I would say his threat is maybe this very annoying move, knight here. Because if he moves his knight here, I want to always look at my opponent's threats first. He's going to be threatening my bishop and my knight. So I have to watch out for that one. Thank you, Jeff Gill, for subscribing. Thanks, man. So um, this is what I've got to watch out for. Knight here. Now, I kind of want to go bishop d3 because that's a very good attacking diagonal. But then if I go bishop d3, knight here, I can then play knight takes h7, knight takes e3, bishop to g6, checkmate. Boom! Boom! Should we try that? It's a very interesting line. Very interesting line. So I'm going to try this one. Let me just double check that because it's either good or bad. Bishop d3, knight d5. Knight takes h7. And he can play something weird like king there. And then try g6. It's going to get very tactical. Let's try it. It looks like fun. 
Let's try it. So I'm going to go bishop here because this is the best square for my bishop. Now one of the things I try to do by swapping these two pawns, this is nearly always good for white, is I've increased my bishop. My bishop has become much stronger on this diagonal. It's become a much uh, stronger piece because there's no Dutch pawn on f5 which is blocking my bishop. So it's become a lot stronger. Uh, now, um, da, 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 da. I don't know. This might not be working because he has got rook takes knight in that line, but it looks dangerous. It looks like fun. So let's have a look. So knight here, knight takes here, rook takes, bishop takes here, knight takes e3. But then, then I think I have something like queen to d3. Or maybe just queen here. It looks like I'm going to get some kind of attack there. So I, I, I don't know. It looks like I think it's kind of worth it. It looks like a fun variation, and we're always on the outlook when we play these. It's not always not always about winning. It's also about having interesting positions and playing some interesting games. So the last, like, okay, let's have a look at that. So knight here, knight takes h7. Now rook takes h7. Bishop takes h7. Knight takes e3, threatening my queen, and th in that position, I if I go queen d3, he goes. So this is what I'm calculating. Try to keep up if you can. Knight takes g2, check. King f2, knight to f4. That doesn't look good for me because when his knight gets to this square, it's good. So knight d5, knight takes h7, rook takes h7, bishop takes rook. Knight takes e3, maybe just queen to e2. Is this good? Is it bad? I don't know. Okay, well, my opponent did not like it. That was a very interesting variation. Instead, my opponent is trying to, to develop. But can I now increase the pressure? I mean, like I said at the start of my show, before I get attacking when I play chess, I normally like developing all my knights and bishops. So my natural thought now is to move my knight to this square because I stop knight here and I develop my last piece and only then do I attack. But as other interesting ideas, I can consider f4 with maybe the idea of going knight takes h7 followed by a queen to h5 check. Quite, quite an interesting idea. So f4, knight takes here, very interesting. Uh, and well, that's a super aggressive way to play. Maybe I should just develop. I'm going against my rules, so maybe I should just develop. Um, but I kind of like this idea. Pawn here. Maybe I'm threatening bishop takes here. Knight takes here. Queen here check. I'm going to play f4 because I'm trying to play the most aggressive game I can. So I'm going to go for the move f4 because... It allows my queen sometimes to come to h5. And I'm just trying to play the most aggressive game. I Sometimes I'm in positional mood. And sometimes I'm just in crazy, crazy mood. I'm in a crazy mood. I'm normally in crazy mood, to be honest. You know, you probably know that by now. Um, Jeff Gill, hello. Oh, we have a raid from chess.com. Wow. How the hell did I get so many viewers all of a sudden? It's magic. Well, thank you, everyone, who has... Um, come across from chess.com. You know, you've had your Magnus, now you get this Patsa GM instead. Rather than any Super GM, you know, Magnus Carlsen, Ginger GM. So what we're doing today, if you've just joined me from uh, the chess.com channel, thank you for coming over. I'm playing a long play game against one of my viewers, and I'm basically explaining my thought process as I go through the game in the hope that you guys watching this can learn from the thought process as the game develops. So you can pick up some tips, you can pick up um, some ideas. And none of this, we're not doing any positional rubbish today, we're going for the hack attack. And we've picked a very hacky opening. So what am I thinking about now? Well, I have a very aggressive knight. I've got rid of my opponent's pawn, which is on this square here, meaning that my bishop now becomes a lot stronger. I've also now opened up my queen to this square. So a tactic which I'm very tempted to play is to play bishop takes h7. 
this was my idea. Now, why do I do that? I could castle here, but I'm actually seeing the opportunity to start an attack straight away. Now, one trick, if I play bishop takes h7, let's think about this. My opponent could take my bishop with two pieces. If he goes knight takes h7, that would not be good because then my queen comes in here check and it will come to f7 with checkmate. Do you see that variation? It's a little bit crazy. Yeah, I expect a lot of you have come over here, just come from the Fisher Random Chess, and now you're watching normal chess. Sorry to bore you guys. We have to get a little bit of normality, but most of my games are never that normal anyway. Um, and again, before I make a move, I'd just like to say hello to everyone who's come and joined. Very good to have you here. You're joining me in the fish tank with my little friends behind me. Uh, I, I've learned how to breathe underwater. Hello to Chess Bay, one of the most coolest people who supports all the streamers. Glad you can join in um, and everyone else has joined. So what I'm thinking is, by the way, going back to the analysis and the whole point of this now, I'm playing a long play game. I'm trying to explain my thought process to help you guys think like a grandmaster. So I'm thinking bishop takes h7. So if he plays knight takes h7, queen to h5 check and queen f7 will be mate. If I play bishop takes h7 and he plays rook takes h7, then I can play knight takes, rook takes, queen to here check and queen takes here. So I'm really liking the look of bishop takes h7 because I weaken all the light squares around his king. So I think I'm going to go for this move, bishop takes h7. This looks like a cool move to play. Let's play some rock and roll chess. Let's go for it. So let's do it. So bishop takes here with the idea of weakening g6 and in some variations trying to get my queen into h5 with check. So this is the way I'm doing it. Uh, I just heard that Magnus Carlsen, I wasn't watching the fish random chess. I just heard that he lost on time. It's quite unbelievable. I will try not to do a Magnus Carlsen. I've never seen uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen lose on time before so that's quite has he ever lost on time before it's an interesting question has Magnus Carlsen ever lost on time I don't know I don't know is this just winning am I just winning here well if I'm not worried let's also uh, the, the other things I'm thinking about here I'm not worried about my opponent taking here because to start with I can always move my rook to g1 uh, which will attack his bishop and then later on my rook will have another piece enters into the attack. The most important thing here is the safety of my opponent's king on, on e8. And if I can get another piece adding to the attack, then I think this is more important than a measly little pawn. I don't care about measly little pawns. We don't care about them. Uh, but my main threat in this position is bishop to f7 check, and then maybe something like knight to f7. Uh, when I have a very nice fork against the rook and the queen. So my opponent is in a bit of a troublesome situation here. Um, so what is happening? What is happening? Okay, so people are telling me, uh, keep moving XX. And do uh, leave your comments in the chat while we wait for black to move. Is saying that Magnus lost against Topalov. Yes, he did. I can remember that. That was... Uh, in Norway as well. Maybe he just like in Norway, he just gets a little bit confused and he, he can't think properly for some reason. What's the score in the match now? Is there one more day to go? Who's winning? Um, I mean, I kind of like I kind of like Fisher Random. I think it's quite a cool game, but I think it takes a lot of getting used to as well. I mean, the, uh, normal chess is 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 confusing enough, you know. Uh, will I be playing some 960 in the future? Hello, Yabjorn. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll give it a go, but I'm, I won't be playing at the same quality as uh, uh, Hikaru or, or Magnus Carlsen, that's for sure. But we might try. We might try. Um, so, okay. Well, continue with the game. Um, my opponent's still thinking here, and I'm just trying to get my attack in with Bishop G6 check. The whole strategy I'm using is a strategy against my opponent's light squares. So g6, very weak. h5, very weak. I'm trying to get in on the light squares. Uh, okay, so Liam Bellwood is telling me that uh, Magnus Carlsen is still points up. That's, that's, that's uh, well, I mean, he's the world champion. He kind of, he kind of should be favourite, shouldn't he? 
Thank you for the shout out, Jeff uh, Gill. That's very kind of you as well. Okay, so my opponent has gone Rook takes. Now, I obviously have no, well, I have one, one interesting move here. I mean, the most natural move is to take that, which must be good. It must be a good move, no? Um, the other idea I do have, which is quite interesting, is to go Queen D3. Just for the idea of going Queen here and Queen here. Uh, I'm not sure I entirely believe that because if I play Queen D3, my opponent can go Rook H6 and he will be a piece up and he'll cover this square. So I don't see anything wrong with a natural move and I always look for the most forcing moves first. And this is my whole idea. So I'm going to play this move and the idea is if I get rid of the Knight on F6, I will allow my Queen into here. Because at the moment that Knight is defending h5 h5 but it won't be if i can get rid of it so uh thank you for s gis, gis for subscribing to the channel you can all subscribe if you want to there's a little subscribe button We're, i was talking about the idea of bringing ginger coin into play at some point and if you subscribe you'll be able to, you'll be able to get rewarded with ginger coin if you miss that you miss that it's all a bit weird and mental ginger coin just another mad idea Another thing I'm, I'm planning to do, you probably know me for Harry the H-Pawn. Harry the H-Pawn has not done much at the moment. He's still here. Uh, I want to send Harry the H-Pawn literally into space on a weather balloon. That's another idea which I'm developing. The best, the, the, well, the, the less you will ask about that, the better probably. Okay, so my opponent has sacrificed exchange, but he's brought his bishop in to cover the light squares. So that's quite a good move. So my knight is attacked. So logically, I have two ideas. Idea number one is to take the knight. And idea number two is to retreat the knight to g5. Thank you, Nakamori Armor Army, for subscribing as well. Now, if I retreat the knight to this square, maybe... I don't know. I mean, which piece is better? What am I thinking? When you have an opportunity to exchange pieces in a game of chess, nearly always the one rule you ask yourself is, which piece is best? If my piece is better than his piece, I won't exchange. If I think his piece, which I can exchange, is better than my piece, I will exchange. Now, the knight on f6 looks like a good piece to me because it defends h5 from my queen. It controls some good central squares. At the moment, my knight over here is in a bad square. Sorry, that's my phone. That's, I think that's actually Magnus Carlsen. That, oh, oh, yeah, it's Magnus. And I better just answer Magnus. We had this before. He has rung me before. I better answer this one. Got, you know, he's finished his game against Hikaru. He's he's feeling a little bit unhappy. Hello, Mag Hello Magnus. You lost. You lost on time. Magnus, you patser, you patser. That's all I can say. If you can't, if you don't even know how to look at your clock, oh, no, no, stop the moaning. You shouldn't have lost on time. You should not have lost on time. Learn to look at the clock. Can I give you coaching? If the price is right, Magnus, ring, ring me back later, please. Thanks. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Yeah. No. Gotta go. Sorry. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Bye. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, we we have to deal with these things. It's a bit rude to to take the phone call during the show, but he was a little bit upset. He lost some time. Hopefully, I gave him a good uh, a good pet talk there, and he will feel a lot more confident in his in his games tomorrow. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to play. Oh, my time's a bit low. I'm going to take that night. I'm exchange up. Another rule you should stick to is when you are points up. When your point's up, you should aim to exchange pieces off the board. So I think a natural move like castling is very good here. But what happens if I check him? So we have to calculate the most forcing moves. Uh, so check. Then he puts his king here. And his king's kind of safe there. It's kind of safe on this square. I always have this check. I don't need to rush it. Now, do I have any tactics? Knight here takes here. Rook g1. His bishop moves away. Check. King here. Can I then use my open line with the rook? Uh, maybe I can play f5. I don't need to do this. It's quite risky. And also, I don't really want to allow any checks here. So if I go knight here, so this is the way I'm thinking. Knight c3, bishop takes here, rook g1. He will play bishop h4 check. No, we, we don't need to do that. Um, 
when you have an advantage on material, best to keep it simple. So I think just um, castling has to be best. It has to be the best way to play this one here. Castling kingside. And I'm just going to try to bring my knight out, bring my queen out. And maybe because my opponent's king is still stuck in the center, I want to open up lines towards it. When you have castled, as I have here, my king is very nicely in this position. But my opponent's king is rather naked. He, oh, look at that. I created a nice blue color there. Very impressed with that. Lovely color blue. I need to try and open up lines. So how do you open up lines in a game of chess? Well, if, if you think it's right to open up lines, you need to look at pawn breaks. Use the little guys. Your pawns, your foot soldiers, are perfect ways to open up lines. So maybe a move like d5, maybe a move like f5. Love the color blue. And we can try to get to his naked king. Naked kings deserve to die. Uh, reminds me of a song. What is it? Uh, Angels deserve to die, die. What was that? Who was that by? I remember that song. Angels deserve to die. Who did that one? You must know the song. Uh, you must know the song. Um, okay, so my opponent, anyway, he's moved his king here. So he's trying to castle. He's trying to get his king to a safer position. Maybe he wants to move his queen, move his knight, and try to use the open h file. But that takes a lot of time. Uh, system of a down, that's right, Stafar. Yeah, that's it, system of down. So again, if I check here, he has bishop g6. Now, do I have a little move to mess up the coordination of his pieces? I'm thinking of f5 here to try to conf you know, confuse his, his coordination. But if he goes bishop takes, I have my rook in. So do I have any tactics there? Looks f5 looks, it feels very logical to me because I want to bring my rook in the game. Now, if he goes bishop takes, I even have g5, g4. Very good. If he plays pawn takes, though, can I take advantage of pawn takes? Because if I go knight c3, he will play uh, pawn here, knight takes here, f takes. And then I should have a good attack, but how good is it? I have a check, king here, rook takes f6, queen takes. I like this. I really like this. I'm going to go with my instinct here. The reason I'm going for something very brutal is that my opponent has worse development than me. Yes, I know I have these two guys, but I have a rook attacking and I have a queen attacking. So I'm going to play here. The idea of this is to bring my rook in the game. It's a pawn sacrifice to try to get some more action. I did some very quick calculations there. You know, when, when you're doing any little sacrifice, any very sharp idea, you have to calculate. Now, just to show you what I was calculating, I was calculating if bishop takes, I have g4, g5. Can you see that? And my pin, pinning and winning. If my opponent goes pawn takes, I'm going to develop knight c3. And then I'm going to try to get rid of the bishop and open up my rook. We'll see. We'll see. One variation, if you can follow this for the better chess players. Pawn takes, pawn. Okay. Knight c3. d5. Knight takes bishop. This pawn, f pawn, takes knight queen h5 check king g8 rook takes f6 queen takes f6 rook to f1 with a big attack i also in that position have queen takes d5 winning as rook looks winning to me um okay uh da, 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 da. sorry i'm just i'll catch up on the chat now sorry i'm a bit behind on the chat i know we've got loads of you now coming in thank you for joining when I do my streams, I, reg I basically do loads of different things. You missed out on a lesson earlier on, uh, a free lesson. I'm now showing my own thoughts when I'm playing. I'm a grandmaster, believe it or not. And I sometimes play some blitz chess, but for now, I'm just doing a little bit of a, a lesson. Okay, so here, I simply thought I had pawn here and pawn here winning a piece. We'll come back to that. Let's just have a look at some of the chat. Uh, there's a lot to catch up on. Kale Tool. Hey man, first time here on your channel, do I have a schedule? I haven't really got a schedule. If you follow me, if you hit the follow button, you'll get notifications every time that I stream. So that's one way of doing it, get a notification. I better watch my time here. Now G4 just looks very strong. G4, G5 winning a piece. Let's do it. I'm trying to use the open file. So I'm going to move a bit quicker now, I'm a little bit short of time. 
Um, okay, so other questions. Sorry, what else has been asked? Um, I'm planning to stream tomorrow. If those of you want to see something different, I'll probably play a bit of Blitz tomorrow, and I'm, maybe another couple of puzzles at the start. Uh, we're in. We're in this show with a puzzle or two. Uh, I might even give some prizes out tomorrow as well. We'll see. But yeah, if you if you follow this channel, you'll know when I stream. Is it possible to get a few more arrows on the screen? There were there were quite a lot of arrows on that last screen, weren't there? I was trying to demonstrate my thought process, but you know, hey ho, we we were arrowing we were arrowing up the board. <laughs> so uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, let's have a look at the chat now. Okay, so Bishop B4. Now again, um, I could even play Knight to C3 here, just developing an extra piece, because that would make him move his bishop again. Why not? I mean, I can win a piece with this move, but why not get the maximum out of my position? I want to develop a piece, and first of all, attack that bishop because it helps me develop peace. I'm still going to win a piece with G5. This must be winning for me now. After the game, do stay tuned because I'll show you some of the variations I was thinking. And I will also um, maybe play, I'll, I'll get a puzzle or two ready for you guys. Okay, so this is the idea. You can see now that the pawn sacrifices work very well because this is what we call pinning and winning. Pinning and winning. Uh, Starfile is saying, um, are they rescheduling Title Tuesday this week? I know they are rescheduling Title Tuesday, but I think it might be next month, which is when they're going to be doing Title Tuesday. Um, so we try and do that. Another thing I want to do, I want to play a rivals match against John Bartholomew. That that would be my next one. I did one before, which I lost by a very small margin. I'd love to play John again. Okay, well, my opponent resigned. He was in a lot of trouble there. Uh, we'll go through the game now. Um, um, I think my opponent was a bit nervous there, but thanks a lot for the game. Thanks, man. Uh, can be nerve-wracking. Well, I mean, I think he got in a little bit of trouble there, but, you know, it, it, it went bad for him. So let me just show you my thought process. So I'd like to try and play a range of death match or, or, or a, just a nice friendly rivals match against John Bartholomew. I mean, John is like the nicest guy in chess, isn't he? So it's always fun to play against John. Okay, right. So I'm going to show you now um, this opening very quickly. My thoughts. My opponent played the Dutch opening. My favourite opening in the whole wide world. Now, the next move is a rare gambit, E4, which you will not see in nearly any opening books. This is a really dangerous little gambit line um, that, you know, it, it, it can it can lead to some very interesting things. I'll tell you another gambit I was looking at today. It's actually, I think it's called the Arafat, is it Ararat? Arafat? Arafat gambit. Now, against knight to f6 on move one, one of my, uh, an opening gambit which I enjoy playing a lot is g4 i like playing this move g4 this is called the kill kenny gambit the point of this is if the black knight takes that pawn we get two pawns in the center and we attack the knight so we gain a little bit of initiative but i saw another gambit today and i've never seen this one before pawn to e4 and apparently this is the arafat is it the arafat gambit and the idea of this gambit it was actually played by a player from Palestine in the Chess Olympiad, but maybe by accident, I heard. And um, the point is, after knight takes here, well, I think you try to get good development now with, like, bishop here. But, I mean, it looks like an absolute load of rubbish. I think quite a good gambit, which I enjoy playing, is g4. And I, I've done this. I've, been, I've defeated some grandmasters with this. But anyway, back to the game. Now, a very famous gambit against the uh, Dutch, this is the Dutch opening, uh, is the Staunton Gambit, named after the English, probably the, well, he was meant to be the world champion at the moment. Um, uh, at, not, not the moment, in the past, Howard Staunton, and he played this opening, E4, the Staunton Gambit. This is very dangerous. The point is, if pawn takes here, um, you often get very good play on this file. Uh, for example, one of the main ideas is knight here, knight here, 
And now we're just trying to win this pawn back with something like bishop g5 trying to take the knight, take the pawn. This is very dangerous. One of the funniest lines I've seen in the Staunton Gambit uh, is queen h5 check. Now this is quite interesting if you're playing someone who has pre-move on. Because after g6, I once saw a game where white now played bishop e2. Now tell me there's no sense of humour in chess. That move, bishop e2 has a load of sense of humour. That is, that has a load of sense of humour. I mean, look at that. That That's a bit of a, a, a bit of a laugh, that one. And the point is, of course, if black has pre-move on and he takes that one, well, look at that, that's checkmate. But that's kind of a stupid idea. Now, the idea I played in this game, which is a very interesting idea against the Dutch, is like the Staunton. And the point is, you try to win this pawn back like the Staunton, with some uh, weird ideas. Yeah, I like the way Dark Tig Free is saying the idiot trap. That sounds about right, actually. It is only a trap that idiots should fall into. Um, let's move on with the game. Now, there was one very interesting moment around this position here where my opponent may have been able to play knight to d5. This was probably his best move. Um, I'm seeing also in the chat, Felix Danmark says he beat Ben Feingold. Good work. You, you did better than me then, the Feingold monster who I can't defeat. Um, and what else do we have? Isn't it bad for White if he goes King F1? I, I think the Kill Kenny's an okay gambit, to be honest. Um, other people in the chat, well, okay, I'll try to keep an eye on, on as much as I can. But let, let's just explain, explain this game very quickly now. Well, I think this would have been a better move. Now, my original idea was Knight takes H7 here. And if he now wins a piece, wins a piece, this is a very embarrassing checkmate position he's fallen into. That is a weird, weird position, that one, isn't it? Weird position. But he could have played Rook takes Knight and after bishop takes here then played this and I, I don't know i really don't know what what the hell is going on here i have no idea what the hell is going on in this position this is just a really weird position thank you for the cheer thank you for the cheer there um whoever put the cheer this is just really weird my opponent has two pieces but his king is still weak so i don't know this is just very complicated position and um, now the only line I was calculating in the game, I think my opponent played a big mistake by playing in this position, bishop b7. He missed that I could take here. And after this, I have a very good position. For example, the one complicated line, which you saw me putting all those all that paint on the board, was if my opponent takes with a pawn here. Now, just to show you while I was drawing so many arrows, the line I was looking at here was knight c3, trying to get rid of the bishop, d5, trying to secure the bishop, and now knight takes bishop. Now, if he wants to keep his pawn there, because I'm threatening to take that pawn, he should go f takes pawn, and now I was going to throw my queen into the attack, check, and I was thinking if he plays g6, this check is very strong, because his king is totally naked again. And if he goes king g8, the move I wanted to play here was rook takes here. I'm trying to get rid of every defender. This is why I was analysing uh, the position. And if he goes queen takes, I either, I, this, is prob this is a winning move because it's a check and I'm picking up the rook. And if he goes pawn takes, I think his king is now too naked. I mean, something with check or something with my rook coming in. I, I should be winning. The magic number when attacking is three pieces, and I have three pieces, while his pieces are all on their original starting square. So that's what I was analysing. Now, I'm going to put a puzzle now up on the screen. This is for everyone. Let's see how you get on. While I put the puzzle up on the screen, I'm going to have a look at the, the chat and try to answer some of your questions um, in, in the Twitch chat. So let's pick a good puzzle now uh this one is reasonably easy and this one i think most of you should have a good chance at solving um i'll turn off turn off the bloody things okay it's white to play and win white to play and win so have a go at solving this one while you do that and have a look at the the questions in the chat okay so uh going back a little bit um is the kill kenny 
Uh, good. Well, the Kilkenny is actually named after a place in Ireland. Uh, JS1000 is saying, is it Kilkenny? It could be Kilkenny from the South Park as well, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Bone Crusher says he brought the Killer Dutch and it arrived today. Uh, well, I hope it works well. The Killer Dutch, it's a good opening. It's helped me win a lot of games. Um, other sensible questions coming through. Can you look at F3 in the Dutch? Uh, that's a very interesting idea, Felix. Not something I've looked at in in in, uh, in much much um, detail myself. Um, now I'm keeping the chat on today. I don't always have the chat here, but try to work it out for yourself anyway. Just don't look at the chat. You know, it's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, what's your opinion of of the Scotch? I, I love a good glass of Scotch, uh, Ligamon Thirty. You know, I, I used to go to holiday in, uh, in Scotland a lot, so I enjoy a good glass of scotch. The opening is okay as well. Um, are there any specific middle game goals that should be achieved in the... Are there any specific goals that should be achieved in the middle game? This is a, a question from Idolin Lad. Like in the opening, you develop all your pieces and get your king to safety. Well, yes, there are. At the start of this show, I was showing some ideas in the middle game. Now, in the middle game, the middle game is much more complex than the opening. And um, the one important thing to bear in mind is that when you play an opening, the opening is just a tool to help you get into the middle game. So really, when I play an opening, I know where it's leading me. So I know the opening will take me to a position in the middle game where I should know what I'm doing in the middle game. It's it's basically like a story. When you play a game of chess, the whole game of chess should be a story that you've seen somewhere before. But it's a story you're creating. It's always different, but it has the same layout. It's like writers who write a novel. They have a specific way of writing it. I mean, look at Dan Brown's book on, oh, you know, they're all kind of the same, aren't they? So it's the same in chess. You should really know in the middle game what ideas to aim for. You should be thinking, well, it, it, you know, when I play this move on move one, what pawn structures should I be going for in the middle game? What pawn breaks are good for me? What are good for my opponent? What, where should my pieces go? Why? Just keep asking yourself the whys and the wheres, all the Ws. This is what I say. Why, where, what? If you just keep asking yourself these, turn off the computer, look at the games of top players. So look at games of top grandmasters who play your openings, and then you should uh, you know, improve and get to know middle game plans. But middle game plans are probably the most important thing to learn in the world, uh, to answer your question in a rather long way. Um, okay, but I'm saying I'm saying Dan Brown, but you know a lot of people don't like Dan Brown. But it's the same for a lot of authors. When you're learning to write, you're learning to write in particular ways. Okay. Anyway, the answer to this question is: we have a lot of the white pieces around the Black King. You would love to play Knight to D7 check, but at the moment the Black Queen is controlling that square. So if we played knight to d7 check, it would just be a blunder because you'd lose your knight. So this is a distraction technique. We're trying to distract the queen away from the d7 square. So we play queen takes f3 first. Now, if white is allowed just to win a piece, he will win the game. So it's more important for... Well, black really has to take the queen, otherwise he's just going to lose. And when he takes the queen, can you now see how white can force checkmate? Let's look for checks, look for the most forcing moves. Knight d7 check. Now the king goes to this square, and this is a beautiful checkmate. We now have to remove the knight so the rook can check. So we can go knight to c6 check. Thank you, Peter9922, for subscribing to the channel. Very kind of you, and I hope I bring you lots of good stuff in later years. There's only one move here, later years, later days even. I'll try to stream again tomorrow if anyone's interested. And here, what can Black do? Well, he's only got one move. He can't move the king. He can't take the rook. So he has to block knight to a6. And now 
this beautiful checkmate knight to b6 checkmate i mean look at those knights those knights are so lovely they're so lovely the knight here takes away the king's squares the knight here checks the king that is a knight orgasm isn't it a knight a knight asm knight asm knight asm i don't know maybe i shouldn't go there you know what i mean the knights are having a great great time in this position um so that 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 would that's a nice little puzzle that one now let me just show you one more puzzle while i try to answer some more questions in the chat so the next one and i'm just going to turn off the evaluations is um really uh, you've got to find white's best move so let's try to solve this puzzle as we go along then i think i'm going to finish with a bit of blitz um a little bit of blitz so um what does white do here it's white to play here and how can white keep attacking the king what is the best way for white to win this position try to think of it move by move try to create checkmate threats every move every move try to create checkmate threats while you have a look at this imagine you're white i'm gonna have a look at some more questions so um okay questions yeah blitz yeah i'll play some blitz soon um have you played any tournaments in liverpool simon yeah I, I played the european championships in liverpool about 10 years ago i actually I, I was in the european union championships and had i won the last round i would have come first equal with um nigel short so but i lost the last round and i felt suicidal it's horrible when you when you lose a very important game and, and I did there it cost me also about five thousand pounds and I was very poor at the time so yes I have played in 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 Liverpool C4 explosive do you like uh, Magnus Carlsen style of play yeah I do I think he plays in a very unique way okay he doesn't play very tactical chess but the thing is at his level at the top top level it's very hard to attack in lots of games because it can backfire. I think up to 2700 strength, you can play hacky chess, aggressive chess, but I do like Magna Carson's style. What to do as white in the London system against the Dutch? Resign, odd skill. Simon, is there an easy way to verify someone is FIDE titled? Uh, Natchik, who's been a bit cheeky. That's a stupid question. Yes, of course there is. Look at the fee day site. Duh. Google. Maybe you can use Google as well. Google. Google. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, any other questions? Right. Uh, well, not at the moment. So, okay. The first move here is indeed Bishop G8 because you're threatening this checkmate. And I actually like this move because it is quite pretty. Now, what happens if King takes the bishop? We have what I call a back spanker. And that is a back ranker, back spanker, whatever you like. So, in this position, h6 is played. And now, as National Patzer and other people have said, we can play queen to e8. And the idea here is to threaten bishop f7 check and queen to where the bishop is checkmate. So, for example, if d2, it's checkmate after check, king here checkmate and this is this is a typical pattern another way to improve at chess is to uh you know try to picture typical patterns but here a queen to e5 was played so now bishop e6 check happens and now i'm just going to get through to the position checkmate in two moves let's just finish this one off and play some blitz so i'm going to play some random blitz people in a second to finish the show off the last 20 minutes i'm going to try to play lots of gambits loads of hacky chess and take some people down so this is what we do checkmate in two moves what is the answer here any more questions before i move on to some blitz chess um side chess delia i'm glad that you're solving thin things with beer in your stomach you obviously haven't drunk enough you need to drink more um According to me, what is it that makes Magnus Carlsen so strong and computer-like compared? Well, I think Magnus Carlsen is just a bit of a genius. I think to be as strong as Magnus, you have to work hard. You have to um, be healthy physically and mentally. And you have to have some natural talent, some special way to see the game. Uh, but work hard is probably the most important thing. 
that is a talent on its own but he has some vision Magnus can just see things that other p players can't see he understands I don't know he just understands things uh, in a very deep way so that's what I'd say about Magnus um, okay so let's have a, 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 a look at do, 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 do. Um, let's have a look at anything okay well if you want to look at titles just go to FIDE FIDE will tell you if a player has a title search their name there will I cover any games this from this weekend on this channel maybe on my YouTube channel later not at the moment um, how am I getting off well yeah one of my ideas you probably know that Harry the H pawn is my, my favourite pawn how am I getting on sending him to space slowly but we are making pro progress I need to buy an air a, a weather balloon I'm going to attach a pawn onto this air balloon with some cameras and send him in as far as I can in the sky and I'm going to record it as it happens and we're going to try to get that footage and make it into some cool videos that's the idea but it's going well <laughs> um, you break my heart Simon I have no talent at all and I hope to get to GM by hard work you can get to GM just by hard work Koval. don't give up we can all get better you just got to put the the time and hours in. I mean, if you do, you know, if you work hard, you can certainly get to IM level. I think just from hard work. But at the end of the day, chess is not easy. It's hard. It's the work you put in. You can learn by street by watching streams, videos, books. You got to find what works for you the best. That is the most important thing. What works for you the best. This is the key thing. Um, if you prefer books, do books. If you like streams, do streams, videos. Find what works for you. What do you like against the Smith Mora? Um, the, the French defence. Um, okay, but now we're running out of time. Let's let's finish this show. We've got 15 minutes left. I'm going to play some blitz. But the solution to this, of course, you just look for the most forcing moves is check. And now, well, King G5 is the only move, and this one weaves its queen around. But I like that little puzzle because the queen does a very funny little root into the the position thank you for subscribing now chick uh, to the channel um and right let's get a game on so i'm going to play three minute chess um let's see if i can get some tough opponents i'm just searching a game now and who do i have here oh my, i've got to change my settings so uh, i'll do that now actually my settings okay i'll do that after the game so let, let's use the harry attack so my favourite little pawn is going to be launch. Come on, Harry. Get in there. Here he comes. Now, this is a little thing I love doing when my opponent fianchettos his pawn. I love attacking that pawn. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what Harry is trying to do. And I'm now just trying to control the centre. And let's just play for the attack now. Okay, so what do we do? Let's bring all the pieces into the game. And one thing I'm going to try to do maybe to open up the position is to play f5 at the right moment. So my main idea is to play f5. Let's stop him going b4. And by playing f5, I'm going to try to open up the f file. So let's do that, f5. Um, and well, I think the reason I over, have over a thousand viewers, and thank you so much for joining me here, is because you guys all came from chess.com. So thank you so much. That's very kind of you to come and join in the madness here okay now what do I do next well there can't be anything wrong I always like developing my minor pieces first and this does look a little bit I have to say I wasn't supposed to be playing 960 chess but this is looking like 960 now I've got to break through here somehow so I want to really get my rook in the game so I'm going to try to force my f file to open up uh, to give me some attacking chances his king is still in the middle as I said in the last uh, game I played when the king is in the middle you want to open up the king so I've got knight takes yeah let's do this more important to keep my rook open at this moment in time uh, and let's keep going his king is in the middle so even if I lose a pawn it's more important to attack his king now i think this works because if he goes knight takes here i will take on f2 which should be very strong if he takes to the bishop here i take on f3 so he's just castled he's trying to get his king as safe as possible 
But now I'm going to, I know where his king is, so I'm going to try to target it over here. How do I do that? Well, I could go queen here, attacking his knight. Queen here, knight takes knight. Knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes f2. I like that move because I'm trying to attack this one and also this one at the same time. So this is what I'm going for at the moment. Uh, and also just pressurizing on my half open file. Always good to have rooks on half open files. Okay, so he's come in here, but what is he gonna do? Maybe I don't wanna allow knight g6. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of that piece first. And then I'm just gonna take on f2. And my position looks very good here. Looks like I'm gonna win a bishop or win this one. Uh, so first of all, let's grab a piece. And I even have my queen coming in here next move as well. So I, I think this should be winning as long as I don't mess up. Now the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is he has this strong line here. So I'm even thinking about going here. I don't want to lose on time as well. That's, that's also a good little tip there. Don't lose on time ever, if you can. So... Do I just try to prepare that move first? Don't lose on time. Why am I moving so slowly then? Okay, let's move quicker. Don't lose on time. So I just want to play the pawn here. This is my idea. I've got to move quicker though, because I'm moving so slow. I'm very slow when I'm commentating, so I'm going to shut up now. I'm just going to shut up. Just going to shut up. Shut up and play. Ah. Right. I don't want to lose on time here. I'm, I'm moving so slow. Why am I moving so slow? Okay. Time to turn up the heat. Attacking his bishop. And now I don't mind any endings because I'm a piece up. Don't get flagged though. Don't get flagged. Got to avoid getting flagged. He's... Whoa, what happened there? Didn't even see that one. Okay, don't get flagged. I'm going to try to checkmate him now. I'm coming through with this one, but I've only got 20 seconds left. I'm, I'm, I move like an old man. Okay, come on, in we go. Quickly. Whoa, can he do that? Can he literally do that? Should be easy. Pre-move. Get the pre-moves in. Don't stay on my... Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> there we go. I'll stalemate it. I just realised that was stalemate. Ugh. Oh, I'm too slow. I'm too slow for this. So, that was not good. How do I stalemate? All I had to do was, in this position... I was pre-moving. I just had to check him. I just had to check him. What a bloody idiot. What a Donkey Kong. No. That ah, oh, I put the rook on the wrong square. Okay. Well, we'll try we'll try to finish off the show with a couple more games. I'm just going to change my settings so we try to play like an IM or a GM as well. Ah, oh, that was a good game, but he was very quick at the end. That is the thing. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm I think I'm okay at blitz, but I'm not very fast. I'm not very fast. Especially when I'm streaming at the same time. Yeah, the other lesson, the main lesson of the day is uh, don't stalemate. Don't go for stalemate. This is, you know, stalemate is not good. And as Oliver Nee says, something to do with a duck, which I, I actually agree with in, in this position. Yes, the duck, the duck is not happy. I'm not going to repeat. I'm going to try to keep it a family stream today. But, yeah, I get it. Oh, God, I feel like such a patser. Such a patzer. Okay, so I'm just going to challenge, see if I can get another three-minute game. We'll try to play against, um, uh, hopefully, 
a uh, okay we got a Russian player 23 uh, 97 so let's see if we get a kill Kenny Gambit and I need to I need to oh yes kill Kenny Gambit come on he'll come here comes the kill Kenny and now we're doing it so this is what I was talking about before the famous kill Kenny Gambit and I sat to pawn but we're going for um, maximum development let's get the pieces in the game I don't know I've got a big center what is this position like is this good or bad okay I'm gonna bring my pieces out quickly develop quickly let's do it now another piece in I'm gonna try to attack this one I love the kill Kenny Gambit it's, my, it's okay can I take that one tell me I can take that pawn can I take that pawn please say I can and then do some tactics so take check g6 can I take that I really want to take that pawn how much do I want to take that pawn it's so much it's ridiculous takes King takes can I make this work? Can I sacrifice on that square? I can't see how I can make it work. Takes, king takes. Where is my follow-up? It looks like he should be weak on the light squares. Check, king here. Check, king here. Queen, d5. You know what? I'm just going to play it. Takes, takes. Check, king here. Check here. K queen, d5. He's got e6. Okay, I'm spending so much time here. Shall I just do it? Shall I just do it? I don't know. Yeah, it probably doesn't work. But uh, who cares? Let's just do it. Okay. Come on. It, Morphe would do it. It's a kill Kenny Gambit. Now, can I take there as well? <laughs> oh, my words. It's getting a bit ridiculous now. Or should I just push my pawn on and open him up? Now, taking there, king takes. I don't have many pieces left. This is the problem. This is the problem. Can I check? There, takes, takes, check here. King there. God, so complicated, this position. It looks like I should have a big attack here. What are we going to do? How am I going to get this one in? I want to sack another piece. Should I do a double morphy? Like, do, should I do it? Or, or should I go d5 as a very sensible move? Oh, I'm going to go sensible. Uh, maybe I could have taken that one. There was some interest. Okay, I've got to move quick. I've spent two minutes told you I was slow okay let's let's just play quick now we've got a bit of an attack a weird position okay we're gonna come at him right come on let's bring him all in we're going for the kill we're going for a weird attack here what is this I don't know I don't know if this is even chess is this chess as we know it Jim what is this position this is mental Mental chess, that's what this is. Well, I can win his queen, but can I mate him? I'll win his queen. I'll win his queen. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, he's got queen takes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I freaked out there. That was bad. I have to resign. Not a good game, that one. Okay, we're giving a rematch. Actually, I, I totally forgot he had queen takes. Right, now two wins. Two wins on a row. Got to finish on a high now. Um, so okay he's going for a gambit I'm just gonna move quicker this game and that last one I think I had a good attack there I had a good attack but I thought I could win his queen but it's one of those double oversights there so we're gonna finish on a win definitely and remember you've got the chess bras afterwards that was pretty bad how did I fall for that one? Oh no okay so we're gonna use my best weapon the Dutch here to try and get a bit of action I think I do need a beer after this. I think you're totally right there. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I should have just gone queen e6 check and kept attacking. And I would have uh, I would have had a good attack there with a kill Kenny. But anyway, kill Kenny reared its ugly head there. Um, so, now d5. I don't, I've done enough blundering today already. I'm just going to move this one away. So, uh, to try and play this d5 move get d5 in so my opponent has stopped d5 now I can double his pawns and get my knight there but I'm just gonna play this sensible move give my bishop a bit of a way in the game and one thing I want to do now thank you rancid gambit for subscribing because obviously you're so impressed with the standard of the Kilkenny gambit that you had to subscribe I, I get you I understand your uh, your your fascination with the Kilkenny. 
Now, I don't, I don't want to allow his bishop to come to this square, so I'm just going to stop that, and I want to develop my last piece. Um, I mean, how could I... I mean, that was quite... I, I, I lost a knight and a queen in that last game in two moves when I had a really good attack there. I actually had... My attack was, was strong had I not gone uh, loopy loo. Now, this is what I call a little ninja bishop. The ninja bishop... He might forget about this piece later on, and it's going to come into the game. So maybe my knight is now going to try to head for this square. So I think I'm going to try to get it around to this square. But I want my rook ready for a potential opening, which he's allowed me to do. Now, do I push on or do I take? I think I'm going to keep it open because I have my rook here. And my knight can naturally now move into the game. I'm just trying to get all my pieces as near to his king as possible. And this is the square I wanted that knight to get to. So we're going to slam it into that square. Now my position should be good. Do I have any tactics here? Or should I play something sensible? Well, I'm going to move my queen here with the idea later on of trying to come down to f2. So in order for that to work, I need to move this knight and this knight out of the way. Now, let's therefore flick this one into the position. And how is this position ended up? I'm not sure. It's interesting. He can maybe take and go queen here. But I have another little trick. Knight here and queen g6. I love to finish this show on a high. Okay, so he stopped that idea. But now can I get to this one? Knight takes g2 complex he can then take here another idea i've got is simply to move my rook around i like that idea my rook's not doing much if you joined the start of the stream today you will know this the stream was on the rook swing so it'd be nice to finish the stream on a rook swing now if you do want to see the start of this show which was really a free lesson from me then you'll have to subscribe to the channel because then you can look at the archive and if you subscribe you can look at all the other streams I've done there's lots of lessons lots of different stuff in 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 there okay so now my attack really seems to be coming on here but how can I not mess I don't want to mess this one up no 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 um, he's just about managed to defend so far so check Okay, check, queen takes, takes here, king here, takes, and then I can take there, oh, he's threatening my rook. I'm trying to finish on a high, guys. What about this one? Dropping my bishop. I'm going to try to finish on a high. Don't know if this is working. I've got a particular idea in mind. This one is my idea. A little bit of a crazy move. Crazy diamonds. Now if he takes, I'd back rank him. But he can go king here, only move. And now I can do this. And the idea, I can go here and back rank him again. But I'm very short of time. I'm winning now again. Don't mess it up, Simon. You're winning again. Nice little tactic there for a change. Oh, no. Time. 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 Uh, okay, come on, time. It's on the clock. Oh, that's a big check. That is a big check. I cannot lose this position. Surely, I cannot lose this one. Only I could lose this position. I can't lose it. Yes, get in the sun. Good to know. Oh, let's finish on a high. <laughs> okay, um, now, just to show you that little tactic I set up there. All my pieces of tactic. It's nice to have one win. For goodness sake, let's get, you know, just one win. And, um, well, the point was here, with this idea, I'm threatening a nasty little surprise for him. Say hello to my little friend on this square. But after he took here, this was my little tactical idea. It's nice to finish on a high. So, and the point here is, well, if he does take the knight, which looks natural, he's going to get back spanked. We're going to back spank him. Queen takes here, check. King here. Queen takes there, check. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. 
I am actually a GM. Do not doubt my title. Occasionally, I can play like a GM. <laughs>